Hello, Professor? Uh, you can you can see my screen, right? I'm ready. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Yes. Yes, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's moving also. Okay, so I'm uh, currently testing whether the PowerPoint it works well. Yeah, 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 PowerPoint, yeah. Can you please check. So, Professor, currently I'm ready yeah. uh, and I'm waiting for your uh, future uh, you know, instructions. Yes, yes. Yeah, our, uh, I would just, I would like to introduce one, one or two minutes. Uh, our okay. chair from Bengaluru section, uh, Dr. Deepa Shana is there. Good evening, and sir. Our, uh, uh, Dr. Deepa Shana is from uh, IEEE Bangalore section chair. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. And our first chair, uh, Dr. Bindu A. Thomas, and uh, our chair elect, uh, Dr. Sudarshan Patil Kukarani, and the Exica members of uh, IEEE. Uh, Mysore subsection and IEEE Bangalore section, uh, all the students and faculty participants all over India, uh, maybe. We got more than 400 uh, registrations for this webinar. So, shall we proceed, Professor? Okay, no problem, sir. I, uh, you know, uh, no, no, wait, I... wait, Professor. We will introduce, we will introduce, then we will start. Okay, okay. okay. Yes, I... there are so many audience, like you said, hundreds. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Prarthana, you please go ahead. Yes, sir. Okay. A very good evening to one and all present here. IEEE Mysore subsection, in association with IEEE Bangalore section, IEEE Information Theory Society Bangalore chapter, and IEEE Circuits and Systems Society Bangalore chapter, is organizing its first webinar on machine learning models for COVID-19 diagnosis. I, Prarthana MR, from the Department of Telecommunication Engineering, on behalf of IEEE MISO subsection, take this opportunity to tell a few words about IEEE MISO subsection. IEEE MISO subsection was established in the year 2020. IEEE MISO subsection is one among the three subsections of IEEE Bangalore section. The aim of IEEE MISO subsection is to conduct various student and professional activities like invited talks, student internships, workshops, and the flagship conferences. IEEE MISO subsection consists of Mysore, Mandya, Hassan, Chamrajnagar, and Kodagu districts. MISO subsection has 26 engineering colleges with 15 IEEE student branches and more than 1,000 IEEE members. IEEE MISO subsection will enhance the professional networking, humanitarian activities, and staying updated with latest technological development. It was inaugurated by Ms. Susan K. Land, IEEE President USA 2021 on 21st December 2020 and delivered the inaugural address. IEEE MISO subsection was initiated by Mr. Puneet Kumar Mishra, 2020 Chair, IEEE Bangalore Section, delivered brief history of IEEE Bangalore Section and the information IEEE MISO Section. The event was graced by presence of key leaders, Professor Akinori Nishishra, Director, IEEE Region, Ms. Michael Lukin, IEEE Vice President, MGA 2021, Professor S. N. Singh, Chair, IEEE India oh, Council, oh. Dr. Ramkrishnan K., MGA Chair, Vice Chair, Member Development. Distinguished invited speakers, Dr. Supavadi Aramavit, IEEE Section and Chapter Coordinator, Dr. K. R. Suresh Nair, IEEE India Council, Chair Elect 2020, IEEE India Council, Chair Elect 2021. This was about IEEE MISO subsection. It's an honor for me to welcome our speaker, Dr. Yudong Zhang, to enlighten us with his knowledge. A hearty welcome to you, sir. I'd like to welcome Dr. Deepa Shanoi, Chair, IEEE Bangalore Section and Professor, UVC Bangalore. A hearty welcome to you, ma'am. 
I would like to extend my hearty welcome to Dr. Parmesha Chari Biri, Professor and Head of Department of Telecommunication Engineering, Chair IEEE MISO Subsection and IEEE Student Branch Counselor, GSSS IITW MISO. A hearty welcome to you, sir. Thank you. I also welcome office bearers and ex-com members of IEEE MISO Subsection, IEEE Bangalore Section, IEEE Information Theory Society Bangalore Chapter. I Triple E Circuits and System Society Bangalore Chapter. I'd also like to welcome all I Triple E staff and student coordinators for their support. Once again, I welcome all my fellow students and friends. Once again, I welcome each one of you present here. It's an honor for me to introduce our speaker, Dr. Yudong Zhang. Professor received a PhD degree in signals and information processing from Southeast University in 2010. He worked as a postdoc from 2010 to 2012 with Columbia University USA and as an assistant research scientist from 2012 to 2013 with the Research Foundation of Mental Hygiene USA. He served as a full professor from 2013 to 2017 with Nanjing Normal University. He serves as a professor at the School of Computing and Mathematical Sciences, University of Leicester, UK. He is the fellow of IET, fellow of EAI, and senior member of IEEE, IES, and ACM. His research interests include deep learning and medical image analysis. He was named. Clarivate highly cited researcher in 19 2019 and 2021. It's an honor to have you with us, sir. Once again, I welcome you. Now I request Yu Dong Zhang, sir, to take over the session. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, in order to save the bandwidth, uh, I will uh, turn off my camera. Yes, yes, professor. Thanks, sir. Uh, the uh, thanks for the uh, invitation from the I Triple E Mysore subsection and I Triple E Bangalore uh, section, and particularly, it's an honor for me to give a presentation at the first webinar. The title of my presentation is uh, the Machine Learning Models for COVID nineteen diagno diagnosis. Okay, I will move to the next slide. Uh, the next slide, okay, I will uh, uh, quickly uh, uh, through it because it shows uh, my like the university page. Uh, I think the the previous session chair has already uh, in, in introduced me. Okay, thanks again. And uh, this slide shows the outlines. So due to the time limit, we we will try to give a, uh, pre uh, like a presentation on the clinical the diagnosis and all the other. Parts of the presentation will uh, attribute to the machine learning models. Okay, so uh, uh, before we uh, step into the main topic, we first need to check the clinical presentation. So here, the presentation is a medical word, uh, which means uh, uh, you can understand it kind of the symptoms. Uh, so uh, the slide shows. The incubation period of the COVID-19, the incubation period extended to 14 days. And uh, you can see from the top right corner, the top right corner is a curve. The curve shows the median time is about a four to five days from uh, exposure to the symptoms onset. And uh, now since the Omicron is a popular variant, the Omicron, the you can uh, think like uh, the median time is reduced to two or three days. And what are the presentations? Like the signs and the symptoms. And the most frequent uh, uh, symptoms is the fever. Uh, uh, there are different studies. And uh, here we show some range. And the different studies shows the popular sign and symptoms is the fever from 83 percentage to 99 percentage. So that's a reason sometimes we need a temperature check. There are some other signs and symptoms like the cough, fatigue, loss of appetite, shortness of breath, the sputum production, the muscle aches and the pains, and there are some uh, other uh, blah, 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 blah signs and symptoms. 
And the symptoms changes and the data comes. So now even we have the Omicron, the Omicron's symptoms are quite similar to the uh, data. So we do not have a separate slide. The data shows the five uh, top five symptoms are the headache, sore throat, a runny nose, uh, a fever, and a persistent cough. And now we come to uh, the we come to you know the requirement. How do we diagnose a COVID nineteen? There are two popular methods. The first is what we call the viral test. The viral test, and the formal name is called the reverse transcription uh, polymerase chain reaction, uh, with a short name the RRT PCR. And the, and the, uh, the PCR method or sometimes it's called the viral test, it's very quick, but it has many shortcomings, like it's easily contaminated, which I will discuss uh, later. And that there, there is another type of diagnosis method, it's called the imaging. You can use chest X-ray, the chest CT, or the chest ultrasound to test the virus. Okay, so this slide shows the viral test method. The viral test method is that like there's a doctor, it will use a swab and then it will insert the swab, uh, you know, uh, to your nasal passage. It will insert all the way till the end. And then the end, you can see at the left side, the end is like there is a tissue called the nasal pharynx. It's at the very bottom of your nasal passage. And the swab will stay there for about 10 seconds. And the nurse will rotate, yeah, rotate the swab. Uh, and uh, it will get some samples. Uh, there are several like sampling method. One is called the nanopharyngeal swab. And uh, a second one is the nano swab. And the third one is the sputum sample. All those are related to the nanopharynx. <laughs> so, what are the weak points of the viral test? The weak points is that the swab may be contaminated. And there's a news released in the uh, scientist.com. Uh, the news says the CDC lab contamination delayed coronavirus testing. Yeah, and also you can think that contamination will reduce the sensitivity specificity. And uh, the variants may negatively affect the detection. Okay. And uh, there are even some uh, most uh, uh, important disadvantages of the viral test. Please see the bottom of this slide. The bottom of this slide shows uh, the, uh, which is like uh, one uh, research study. Uh, it says in the 413 patients with negative uh, RT-PCR results, and 308 out of 413, about 75 percentage had a positive chest CT findings. Yeah, so what does this mean? This means that the PCR method may skip the positive patient. That means someone, they have the COVID-19 positive. Yeah, but, uh, but uh, the Viral test just shows negative, and if you put all the all the patients into a CT scan, the CT scan will show some positive evidence. The patients are already influenced by the COVID nineteen. So uh, now we will uh, try to discuss the advantage of the chest uh, imaging. The uh, advantage of the chest imaging here, I list the three bullets. The chest imaging can detect the lesions where the biomarks were observed. Yeah. So the chest imaging can directly, directly reflect the biomarks of your lungs. The chest imaging can immediately give decision as soon as the imaging is complete. Yeah. And the reports show that the chest particularly the chest computed tomography, the chest CT can detect the 
almost 97 percentage of the COVID-19 infections. So the chest imaging is much more accurate, is much more accurate than the PCR method. And uh, this slide we show some comparisons of three imaging methods. Uh, the first is uh, that we call it the chest X-ray. The chest X-ray, you can see on your left side, the advantages of the, uh, and the disadvantage of the X-ray is that the X-ray, it is very quick. You just stand there and the doctors, yeah, snap and the X-ray uh, picture is done, is carried out. Uh, but it also has the disadvantage that it, the X-ray included the poor soft tissue contrast, and it is a 2D imaging method. What does the 2D imaging mean? It means the X-ray method cannot uh, differentiate the depth, the depth information. So from the bottom left, you can see you can't uh, differentiate which part is nearer to your eye and which part is far away from your eye. Yeah, this is uh, like when we uh, uh, lift, uh, uh, when we like in the light, we look at the stars. We can't say which star is near our Earth or which star is far away from us because we can't differentiate the depth, the depth uh, information. Yeah, and then uh, in the middle, in the bottom middle, shows the chest CT. The chest CT it can provide the finest resolution and it is better to recognize the extreme smaller uh, nodules. It provides high quality and a three-dimensional chest data because you know the CT, it is a three-dimensional imaging method. And on the right shows the ultrasound. The ultrasound, the US, the ultrasound, it is an operator dependent. So which means the different operators may generate different results. So it's hard to keep the ultrasound probe at the same position. And you can see here, we have the yellow and the green arrows on the bottom right side, which shows some suspicious leaves of the COVID-19. Yeah, and you can see it's very hard to for the non-experts to, uh, to determine whether it's COVID-19 or not. So now we will say the chest CT is the best among all the three chest imaging methods. Yeah, the chest CT, it can provide a better results than the X-ray and the, and the ultrasound. Oh, okay, and the reason here, uh, 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 we can see here, uh, uh, the, from the top right, you can think the virus will influence the res respiratory system. Okay, uh, someone said that the audience is very low. So I hope, I'm not sure. Uh, can you, uh, I will try to like uh, uh, move the microphone to to my mouth. Hope that now you can hear uh, clearly. So is it better now? Yep, this is better, though okay, I could uh, hear. Well, okay, great. Yeah, because sometimes you can think it's a cross continent talk. It's uh, okay. An attention request. Okay. Yeah, and and you can uh, you can think. Yeah, and uh, this is a repository system. The repo the repository system. You can think the virus first. Uh, uh, it will influence or it will infect the pharynx, and then uh, the virus will go down to the lungs. So. The chest CT can definitely help you to, to make a, diag a diagnosis. But please be aware the chest CT is not uh, recommended for the routine screening. And the reason is that it is time consuming, it is expensive. And, uh, and uh, uh, the chest CT only works when the virus affects your upper resp uh, respiratory tract or the low resp respiratory tract. So it means at the very early stage, like the virus, just to influence your mouth or your nose, the chest CT uh, does not work. Okay, let's move to the next. Okay. 
Hmm. Wait a moment. The hog to move to the next because I uh, someone. Oh, I see. Because I needed to turn off the annotation. Uh, but uh, anyway, so now you can understand. We can learn something uh, uh, very much important called the ground glass opacities. So what does the ground glass mean? The ground glass is that uh, if you have some uh, liquid um, the liquid um, uh, medicines, you will, you will get a glass bottle. And then there's a stoppers. You can think of some caps, some stoppers on the top of the bottle is used for a ground glass. And this ground glass opacities will also happen on your on your lung if you are uh, infected. So you can see, think that uh, the healthy person, the healthy person, they will have some crystally clear uh, lung. You you can't see anything. But for the COVID nineteen uh, patient. You will see many ground glass opacities. Uh, these symptoms that takes place in your lung, uh, yeah, in your lung chest CTs. So now uh, we will introduce uh, some other important things called the uh, crevy pavy. So what are the crevy uh, the uh, Okay. Okay. What happened? Okay. Uh, let me check. So it, it seems there are some uh, windows uh, popped out uh, at my side. I will try to close the windows. It says create create a breakout sessions. I will try to okay. I will try to click it. Okay. Here we go. So uh, here we show that very early, very early. On the left, you can see it's a very early stage. There are some ground glass uh, 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 that takes place here. And on the middle, uh, you can think uh, this is on the middle stage of the, of the COVID-19. And uh, where we can we can see the credit paving, it happens. So what does the credit paving mean? You can think like if we want to build a wall, we just uh, stack the uh, uh, bricks and uh, uh, like uh, we just a uh, pave like uh, a crazy uh, pave the bricks into build a wall and uh, finally, finally on the right we can see some late some late phase COVID-19 uh, where you can see uh, on the left the lung is already 100 percentage occupied by the ground uh, glass opacities so this means uh, for the patient the whole left lung cannot breathe. Uh, we can understand uh, these kind of things called the crazy, uh, the uh, uh, crazy paving and the consolidation things. Okay, we we'll move to the next. Okay, so here we also use like uh, examples. The example is that uh, this is called the A and the B. And this is the picture C and D. The A and B shows uh, on the day of the admission, we just have some patch ground glass. So, like uh, this is the first day. This is the first day. And uh, the C and D shows the fourth day. Shows it's the f it is the fourth day. So, where we can see that uh, on the first day, like uh, the lung is uh, relatively uh, quite good. You can see just to see some veins uh, from the lab. But on the bottom, you can see the consolidation uh, start and the credit paving, it just uh, starts. There are some uh, ground glass opacities at this side of the lab. And as the time goes by, by, there are more and more ground glass opacities that will be stacked within the patient's lungs. Okay. So now uh, we come to uh, learn some machine learning models. First, we will think, uh, we will report the results from our lab, the transfer learning things. So why do we need a transfer learning? The transfer learning is particularly suitable for the COVID-19. The transfer learning, uh, it is suitable for this, uh, what we call the same domain, but the different task or the different domain or the same task things. Uh, the transfer learning 
uh, compared to the ordinary machine learning, it uh, uses a pre-trained model, yeah, to solve the uh, the task in the same domain. And we tested uh, in total seven different pre-trained models in our uh, in our lab. We tested a NextNet, VGG, Google Net, ResNet 18, and 101. We also tested the Google Inception V2, V3, and DanceNet. And we uh, we also try to add some improvement in our in our proposed models. The first is that we try uh, we tested the different randomized neural networks. The random uh, my neural networks is different from the ordinary neural network because the weights of the randomized neural networks are generated randomly and keep fixed during the training. And we tested the three randomized neural networks, the Schmidt neural network, the extreme learning machine, the random vector functional link. And uh, uh, we can get some result. Yeah. We can get some uh, like a result here. So first, uh, you can see from the left uh, left side, we tested uh, the uh, next net, Google Net, ResNet. We we just use the the most simplified pre-trained model. That means we uh, re remove the last three layers and we replace the uh, them with a uh, fully connected layers, and we get the accuracy uh, as below. So where we can find the DanceNet 201 can get the best result. And the uh, the worst result is the Google Let. The Google Let just get an accuracy of 80%. And then meanwhile, we tried to, uh, please check the right side table. We, we tested the result of adding the randomized neural network, the SNN, ELM, and RVFL, and we find the randomized neural networks can get a better results than the ordinary transfer learning. Yeah. So we uh, uh, we get some results here. Okay. Now uh, I will try to move to the next. I think I should first stop annotating and then I can move to the next. Okay. And the second uh, improvement model. Uh, based on transfer learning, is we proposed a new method called the deep CCT filling uh, via the uh, DCA. So, what does the DCA means? The DCA is something called the uh, discriminant uh, correlation. So, where you, you can see here uh, a discriminant uh, correlation analysis. So, which means the DCA. Uh, and on the top, on the left side, you can see uh, uh, what we do. We, uh, for an input CCT image, we will allocate two pre-trained model, uh, the pre-trained model one and the pre-trained model two, and we developed a new method to uh, extract the learned features from the two pre-trained models. Uh, and then we proposed an improved DCA method to fuse, to combine, to concatenate the two learned features. and. Uh, we uh, decompose it via the unitized between class scatter matrix, and we get some transformed features. And then we diagnose the between set covariance matrix. Uh, these are very uh, professional words. So uh, if you do not understand, uh, this does not matter because we have shared the codes, the images, and the PDF of our paper in the uh, research gate. So if you are interested, feel free to download it. It. Okay, and uh, uh, the paper uh, get very uh, you know uh, excellent results, and we tested uh, our method on uh, identifying the COVID nineteen. We get a micro average the F one score of as high of ninety seven point ninety seven percentage. Okay. Uh, and in this slide, we show some other uh, like uh, transfer learning method. We use a customized VGG. So what is our idea? Our idea is to combine the conventional feature with the deep learning features. We use a VGG 19 uh, architecture. And meanwhile, we think the traditional machine learning, it also works quite well. 
we tested the uh, conventional wavelet transform, the discrete wavelet transform, the uh, grade level co occurrence, uh, co occurrence uh, matrix. And uh, uh, in total, we get 150 features from the handcrafted features. We get 1024 the transfer learning features. We merge the two features and we use some PCA selection and CR reviewing. And we tested several uh, different classifiers like a softmax, support vector machine one and two. There are two variants and the K nearest near nearest levels. Also, the result is quite quite good. We get a very excellent results. And finally, uh, we also tested some result called the uh, a dense net. Uh, a dense net. Uh, we tested the, the uh, something called the uh, optimization of transfer learning setting. Why we use the optimization? Because for the transfer learning, we need to check uh, uh, which layers are frozen and which layers will be used for a slow training and which layers will be used for a fast training. So in our, uh, in our method, where uh, you can see here, we, we test the three different styles. The frozen layers means there's no learning. And we have some middle layers means we have a slower learning. And we choose someone called the new layers, which means a faster learning. We tested the different settings of the uh, uh, schemes, of the strategies of how do we allocate, how do we randomly allocate the frozen layers, middle layers, and the new layers. And finally, we get our result. And the result is shown here. Okay, so uh, now we will try to move to a, a recent paper. So this paper is published in the uh, Knowledge Based Systems uh, 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 several months ago. And uh, uh, what we have done is that we try to combine some global or optimization method. So we proposed a novel method called the Moton Factor Biogeography uh, Best Optimization Method. We use this global optimization method to, to, uh, to optimize the kernel size, the number of kernels, and the learning rate, and some other hyperparameters yeah, of the convolutional neural network. And uh, we combine... Uh, okay. Hello. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we try to combine the global learning method with the convolutional neural network, and we get excellent results here. And uh, this slide shows the uh, result. So we we tested like a, a triple class classification: the COVID nineteen, the normal, the healthy one, and the pneumonia, and we get a very excellent uh, results here. Okay, okay. Uh, sorry, uh, due to the time limit, I will try to accelerate. Yeah. And uh, then uh, in this part, I will uh, discuss some graph convolutional network. We also test uh, proposed the three graph convolutional uh, networks. So why do we uh, need to use graph? We first need to discuss the motivation because the motivation is quite important. Someone will say, uh, Professor, the convolution CNA works very good. Why do I need to use graph? Why? And uh, the answer is that the graph can help us to learn what we call the relation-aware representation. Yeah. So you can see this picture. You can see this picture. You can think every node and every clustering center is a COVID-19 image. And let's say we have some COVID-19, the CT1 and the CT2, maybe CT1 and the CT2, they are looks very similar. So we can build a link between the uh, graphs. And meanwhile, we have CT3 uh, and the CT4. Maybe uh, those two uh, CTs, they are quite similar with each other. So we can build a, a graph. We can build a kind of similar of graph in this way. And we can get a result. We can get a result. The decision of CT1 should be identical with decision of CT2. And the, 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 diagnosis, uh, the diagnosis result of the CT3 should be 
the same of the CT4. So we use this graph to help us improve the prediction uh, result. Okay, and uh, now we come to uh, uh, how do we uh, how do we make make this graph? Uh, here you understand the graph. It in, uh, uh, we have the node right, and also we have the link. So when we make the graph of our COVID nineteen image, the each node, each node is a CT image, and each link, each link is the distance of the two CT uh, images. Here is the link. So uh, like we have discussed before, if two CT images they are uh, looks quite close with each other, and we will build a link between those two CT uh, images. And let's let us see the result. We find that, that, that after introducing uh, okay, so, uh, I hear some uh, voices. Uh, do you have any questions? Maybe you can uh, drop your questions in the uh, chat box, and we will left, uh, have about a ten or fifteen minutes to uh, uh, answer the questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, please, please uh, okay, uh, and then uh, when we check the uh, uh, after we uh, introduce the graph to our uh, deep learning models, we find the result increased. You can see here the sensitivity specificity has increased to more than ninety five percentage. And we have some other models like here, the CGNet models. The CGNet models, we also uh, in, introduced the graph. We find that the results is very good. And finally, I want to uh, introduce a very important uh, model called the FGCNet. I think this model uh, was uh, uh, obtained more than 100 citations every year when, uh, after it has been published. So what do we do now is that we have a data set. You can first see the bottom, the, the, the bottom part. We will use uh, our deep learning models to get the image individual level representation. And on the top, on the top uh, pipeline, we use the k-means uh, uh, clustering to get the centroid. And we use the k-nearest neighbors to build this graph. And we get this, we call it the relation aware representation and we fuse uh, the two we fuse uh, we fuse like uh, the two uh, relations and we uh, send the features into a linear, linear projection and followed by a soft max and a cross entropy loss so uh, wow well, okay uh, uh, what we got here is we get this like FTC net the result was published in the information fusion and uh, we find that the result is better than more than uh, uh, 16 state of the art uh, results. Okay, so now we also needed to know uh, can we build some attention uh, network? Yes, uh, the answer is yes. The attention will not only tell the neural network where to focus, it also improves. Yeah, so here we will show some uh, attention network to help to help uh, to identify the COVID-19. Uh, due to the time limit, I will quickly go through it. So the first way uh, you can see, we try to use some CBM method. And uh, uh, let's check the result. The bottom one shows there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven millions here. There are seven millions. So the, that means there are seven suspicious millions. And using our attention neural network, we can see here the heat map, the red the red areas of the heat map, it almost cover uh, covered all the suspicious uh, lines of the the chest alone. So which means the attention network it works quite well to not only help make the diagnosis, but also locate and give the locations of the suspicious lines here. Uh, okay, so this slide also shows some uh, uh, some like attention network. We try to combine the VGG with the CBM, and we get a very good uh, results here. As you can see, we tested the COVID nineteen. We tested the commu community acquired pneumonia. We also tested the uh, tuberculosis. The tuberculosis. 
and we find all the three disease one we can get their hit maps and the bottom one shows what the uh, the uh, doctors uh, results and finally we we propose a new method called the viewing the viewing of chest x-ray and chest ct uh, because we think uh, uh, the X-ray can provide some information. The CT can also provide some information. Can we fuse from the hardware? And the answer is yes. Uh, 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 on the left shows the models. We call it the midcan. So what we do is that we have a subject. We have a patient. We try to obtain the chest CT images. And meanwhile, we try to, to obtain the X-ray images. And we will uh, extract their features, and then we will concatenate their features and send it to the uh, classifier. And meanwhile, we tested the uh, suit case, the single input. We tested the, either the chest CT or the uh, X-ray. And what are the results? The next slide shows the result. The result shows that if we uh, fuse the, both the X-ray and the chest CT, the, the middle can result can get a better result. We can see the AUC here. The area on the cur a curve is almost a 98 percentage. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, you can see if we use an, a single input, a single input like the CCT or the X-ray, the, uh, the area on the curve is slowly uh, uh, decreased. Okay, so finally, we want to say, uh, nowadays, we need to make the explainable AI or something we call the trustworthy AI because we really want to deploy our AI models in the hospitals. So we may need to use some uh, 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 grand cam, the grand cam method to help us. And uh, here we show some heat maps. We show heat maps of the healthy, the secondary uh, pulmonary tuber tuberculosis and the community acquired pneumonia will show you the heat maps. And these heat maps can help us, can help us to uh, uh, not only uh, make the diagnosis prediction, but also to uh, locate where the suspicious leanings are. Okay, so due to the time limit. So finally, I just uh, uh, want to share with you, how do we make our app uh, remotely accessible? Even you are currently at India or some other countries, you just type the URL of our remote server and then you can upload your CT images and then they can, the remote server can make the, uh, can make the, can make the diagnosis. So here, uh, please uh, pay attention that we have the address bar. Yeah, so this is our university and the KDML means the knowledge discovery and the machine learning is the name of our lab. And we have some uh, thumbnail galleries and we have some button group here, some knob. The knob shows we, uh, we can identify five categories here. And we have three maps, lamps. Why do we need three lamps? Uh, because the pre-trained model are sometimes a bit slow. We need the four gauges and the three lamps to indicate the app is running. So in this slide, uh, you can see uh, uh, this is shows a video. So I hope like the uh, remote access can will not uh, okay. So you can see that uh, if you upload an image here, uh, and this app can remote remotely make a di diagnosis of what uh, which type of the chest CT images. So you just uh, use uh, drag and uh, drop like a method to upload a chest CT images. And the remote server will tell you whether it's a COVID-19 or it's some other uh, infectious disease, diseases. <laughs> okay, so, uh, okay. Due to the time limited, now we come to the last page. And uh, thanks again uh, for listening to my presentation. I hope that you, you can, like uh, the, this talk can uh, benefit your future researches. Here I uh, list my emails. Uh, you can now uh, uh, ask questions like uh, via the uh, online presentation, or you can drop questions in the chat box, or you can, or finally you can uh, 
write me emails to me. Okay, thank you. And uh, I will pass the microphone to the session chair. Are there any queries from the audience? Yes. Uh, can I go ahead? Yes, sir, please. Uh, Krishna, thank you for a very interesting and very important uh, topic. Uh, my first question is, uh, uh, what is the ground truth based on which test? Thank you. I think this is a very important uh, question, the ground truth. So in our uh, work, we tested both the public and the private. And what we find is that the public database is too easy. Uh, you may download it from the Kaggle and you will find it's very easy. You can get a 99 percentage on the public uh, 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 public uh, data set. But we do not use the public data set because we find all the images are almost perfect. They are suitable for, for teaching, for teaching. And in the realistic like situations, we think the images are much more challenging. So we, uh, this PowerPoint slide report that we're using our private data set, you can see that the highest accuracy is about 97. Or, or yeah, and if you download the public uh, dataset from Kaggle, you can easily get an accuracy of ninety nine percentage. Okay. Uh, yeah, but the ground, uh, the how do how do they in the data set? How do they uh, label something as COVID uh, based so, on which? Okay, I understand. Uh, our case, we invited the three experienced radiologists, and all okay. the three guys, they have some, let's say, have some uh, working experience of over ten years. And uh, okay. uh, we we first ask two uh, radiologists to label, and if their uh, their uh, their let's say their diagnosis are of the same, and we will say, okay, uh, this is COVID nineteen or not, and if they have disagreement. We will invite the third radiologist to make an agreement by the majority voting. Let's say if two radiologists say it's COVID-19 and the third one says it is healthy, we will use the majority voting method. Okay, so, so my second question is, uh, in, our, in the last uh, experiment, you showed uh, uh, three, four uh, diseases apart from the COVID. Yep. So, can you just give one example? How are the features of COVID disease different from features of another disease? Oh, this is also a very important question. So here, I think uh, uh, maybe this slide can help uh, like uh, answer your question, right? Okay. And uh, uh, maybe, uh, sorry, uh, I think uh, I will try to try to, oh, oops. I will try to, uh, we can find uh, like a COVID-19 uh, method. So, uh, the COVID-19, uh, okay, okay, yes, you are correct. So the COVID-19, I think the most important thing for the COVID-19 is that it will occupy, the, let's say, almost the, uh, uh, a very large portion of area in your lab, right? And uh, that's the reason why the patients can't uh, breathe, because you can think, if your lungs here, yeah, you can see here, if the lungs have all, almost uh, take up all the rooms of your lungs, and uh, if you breathe an air, and the air can't like uh, reach the, we call it some like a uh, small air, air bags there, and uh, this is uh, very hard, you can even die. And then let's return back to some other chest infectious disease. Uh, for example, uh, I think uh, this one is uh, okay. Okay, maybe like uh, yeah, this one is good. And then, uh, what you will see that the tuberculosis, the tuberculosis, and the the community pneumonia, you can see that 
they are, they are occupied areas, never pass, let's say, uh, 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 even half, never pass. So that means those uh, are clo clinic because they are quite slow. It's not some acute like a disease, like the COVID-19. Maybe you have, right. you can hear that someone suffered from the tuberculosis or the pneumonia. They, they have some problems, but they will not die. And why COVID-19 they will cause people die? Because you can think they have what we call the crazy paving. The crazy paving will occupy all the rooms of your lounge, so you can't breathe. Got it. Okay. So, oh, thank you. So, thank you very so, much. So now you understand why the yes. why the COVID-19 can cause a death, right? And uh, right. meanwhile, right. why some other lung disease? They just give you some problems. It's not a big deal. You just need some rest. Right. 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 Sir. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Um, Thank you. That also. Uh, okay, Dr. Pudip uh, from yes, yes, ask a question. How to identify the future name and its importance to the problem under investigation? Uh, uh, hello. Can you can you repeat the problem again? Because from my side. Yeah, how, I to how to identify the future names and its importance to the problem under investigation? Oh, you mean how to identify the problem of the COVID-19 research, right? Yeah, so I think currently uh, uh, the research topic or the research hot area of COVID-19 has, all, I think, most of the challenges have been resolved. And currently, what we will do is that some uh, to-do list, some future to-do list, is that uh, can we combine different uh, modalities? Like, uh, as I said, can we combine heterogeneous like uh, features? We can have some features from X-ray, from the ultrasound, from the chest CT image. Can we can we even like include the the patients? Let's say the uh, blood pressure. The, the age, their gender, their race, some, some let's say, the non-imaging features. If we can combine them together, and we are expected to get a better or even accurate AI model. So this is something that is quite challenging, and it's worthy for us to investigate on the, this area. Okay. Yeah, one more question is there. Uh, the, build, the model presented is built by using which algorithm? Uh, you mean the vegan uh, transformer, right? Oh, uh, yeah, the, the model. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we can have, have some modern like models, uh, like the vegan transformer. Because a vegan transformer, you need to divide an image into patches. So it's very time consuming. And, uh, and also, you may be aware. Because the COVID-19, the data set is quite a small. Like the urban oh. public data set, it has thousands of images. But you, if you think a face recognition method, the face recognition method, it has at least millions of images. So the COVID-19 uh, recognition problems, it is actually, it is actually a small size uh, 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 data set, a small size uh, data set problem. So. I think, okay, yeah, so I think that helps you. Okay. Oh, yeah, oh, yes, because I, sorry, I should also say, I just noticed someone uh, uh, drop a message in the chat box. Okay, sorry. Okay. So, Professor, one more question is here. Which database uh, data set was used? So, whether it is available publicly? Okay, so currently, uh, I suggest that uh, you can use the open uh, access data set in the Kaggle. Because in the Kaggle, uh, you can Google the chest CT, the COVID-19, and the first one is a Kaggle uh, 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 data set. And our lab, our, our master student, they use some very simple method, like uh, use a ResNet and uh, to test on the data set, and they can get a very high accuracy, like 99%. So I think uh, this is particularly good for you to publish your paper. But if you want to, Develop some real trustworthy AI model. You should uh, you should discuss with the local hospitals, and because the real data is always very challenging. Okay, okay. 
So how do you provide data safety for the medical data? Uh, yes, no problem. Yeah, you can uh, write an email to me, and uh, I I will need to like uh, uh, forward the email to our doctors because currently uh, what we have done is that we we have uh, some uh, uh, chest uh, chest uh, CT images from local hospitals, and the local uh, the local hospitals, the doctors, the doctors themselves, they hold the right to to handle let's say to, to of the uh, of the uh, data set and uh, for me i recommend that uh, if you want to publish on some computer science journals it's better to use pu uh, openly accessible data set because the reviewers will also say that the openly accessible data set it is a ground truth no matter whether it has some problem like uh, too easy <laughs> okay okay so what about the validation for the results since uh, this model is going to use deep learning? So any yeah, how, validation? Okay, like the validation, yes, it's true. Because uh, let's say, uh, even if you get a very excellent results, they are the computer simulation, but but we still need to go through some strict medical validation before we can apply it to the uh, medical environment. So what we can do is like that, we use some remote server, so like the video I shared with you. We requested the doctors to get access to our UI, our web app, and they can give some feedback. And the uh, and we find that the real realistic uh, data sometimes it has many things you need to consider. Like we have some things called the data drift or the concept drift. Yeah, because. That there are different uh, hospitals. They will use different uh, scanning protocols, and uh, which makes the images looks sometimes even different from the images we are using in our training set. So that's a reason. Uh, if you want to to, to uh, deploy your AI model into the realistic uh, envir environment, you always need to to uh, discuss with the doctors, and you need to test it like hundreds or even thousands of times. Thank you. Thanks for the nice presentation. Actually, all of the participants are appreciated uh, your task. Uh, once, first of all, uh, thanks for you know accepting an invitation and delivering the wonderful uh, uh, speech. I hope uh, the, you have cleared all the doubts of the participants. So, uh, Prantana, you please go ahead. Yes, sir. It was such a thoughtful webinar. I hope the knowledge gained from this webinar would be fruitful to all the young minds. As we have come to the end of the webinar, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to Dr. Yudong Zhang, sir, for enlightening us. Thank you, sir. I thank Dr. Deepa Shanai, Chair, IEEE Bangalore Section, and Professor, UBC Bangalore. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. It was such a wonderful talk. I enjoyed it and learned a lot from it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prarthana. Thank you, madam. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. I wholeheartedly thank Dr. Parmesha Chari Bidi, Professor and Head of Department of Telecommunication Engineering, Chair IEEE MISO Subsection and IEEE Student Branch Counselor, GSSS ITW MISO. Thank you for your support, sir. Thank you. I also thank all office bearers and XCOM members of IEEE MISO subsection, IEEE Bangalore section, IEEE Information Theory Society Bangalore chapter, IEEE Circuits and Systems Society Bangalore chapter for the support in conducting this webinar. Thank you all. I once again thank each one of you present here for making this webinar a success. Thank you all. Have a great evening. Uh, thank you all. Uh, I put the... Uh, the feedback link in the uh, chat window. So kindly download this certificate. So if you are unable to download today, uh, you please do it tomorrow. So because it will generate only 100 per day. Uh, so you will try tomorrow. So Professor, thank you uh, for your nice presentation. So we will see you once again. So we will try to have physically if the all COVID do so over. So definitely we will invite one. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Mm, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.
थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर